2022 was a year of highs and lows for harm reduction. For the first time ever, a sitting president praised harm reduction during the State of the Union address. President Joe Biden called for more funding for harm reduction to help beat the opioid overdose crisis. Around the same time, an untrue story about the Biden administration giving out money to purchase crack pipes went viral. Even though the White House corrected the record, the negative press made it even harder to promote harm reduction. Misinformation and fear-mongering have negatively affected the movement to make tobacco harm reduction more widely accepted. The FDA announced high-profile marketing denials to electronic cigarette makers and proposed a full ban of menthol cigarettes. Courts reversed or paused some of these denials after manufacturers filed lawsuits against the FDA. And more than 175,000 public comments were submitted to the FDA about the menthol ban. Meanwhile, lawmakers in some states proposed higher taxes on e-cigarettes or bans on flavors. Some even considered vape bans because of concerns about single-use plastic and the environment. Overdose prevention centers also made headlines this year. Reports from the nation's first publicly recognized overdose prevention center showed that they helped people avoid fatal overdoses. Despite this, the governor of California vetoed a bill that would have allowed overdose prevention center pilot programs to operate in select cities. Further proof that overdose prevention centers continue to be contentious in the absence of federal guidance on the topic. Harm reduction definitely got more attention this year and saved lives, but there is more work to be done. To get it right, harm reduction should be apolitical, non-judgmental, and equitable. People's lives depend on it. To learn more about harm reduction public policy, please contact Mazen Saleh at R Street Institute.